another edition of Live at Recreate, our regular webcast featuring local musicians and recorded live here at Recreate Arts Initiative in downtown Lebanon, PA. Tonight we're featuring the Joel Olnick Band from Harrisburg. And they're going to you know, do some stuff and like that. So without further ado, <laughs> please welcome <coughs> Joel Olnick Band.
like to thank everybody for coming out tonight, and thanks to Jandy and Luther and everybody here at this wonderful place. Uh, you guys don't know how lucky you are to have such a great arts institution here in Lebanon. Oh. And again, thanks for having us here. We really appreciate it. This is really cool. Thank you.
the song was called, you guessed it, Hey, He, I, Ho.
song called Food Truck. It's off our latest album, Downtown. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us once again. We are taking a break here with the Joe Olmick Band tonight, uh, which consists of Stu Bradley on drums, Jamie Aston on bass, and, of course, Joe Olmick here on guitar. Hi, guys. How's it going? Good, good. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having us. This is really cool. We're really having a good time here. I'm glad you're here. And I, I know everybody else in this audience is having a great time, right, everybody? Yeah. All right, so let's get down to it. Yes. First thing I always ask everybody is, uh, how did you all first uh, start playing music? Well, this band is actually an outgrowth of all of the solo albums that I was doing a few years ago. I've been recording original music off and on ever since I can remember. And in the last few years, I started taking it a bit more seriously than I used to as far as promoting it and getting out and doing some shows. And we started off doing some ambient stuff and having a record release party. And I'm like, I need to get some guys together and maybe we can go out there and do a, a live show. And fortunately, these two were available. We did it. It worked out so well. Uh, it turned into an album, actually, live at the Candy Factory. And then it ended up turning into, let's do another album, and after that, let's do another album. And in the last year or so, we started talking about doing shows more frequently than we used to. And to the point now where we're on track to do about a half dozen shows this year, which is huge compared to what we used to do in the past. Um, and it's really exciting for us because we've been able to play venues such as, you know, the World Cafe Live in Philadelphia, um, we've played Metropolis in Mechanicsburg, River City in Harrisburg. We've now done a show here in Lebanon. I mean, it's now just... Now you've made it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have finally hit the big time. <laughs> and it's really cool because not only are we doing original uh, instrumental music, which is not the most popular genre, but the fact that we don't even live in a major city and we've been able to get such amazing response. I'm just absolutely overwhelmed. Uh, our last album got played on over 100 independent college radio stations in the U.S. and we were actually on the national college radio charts not once but twice last year which I, I didn't even know about the first time until I went to check on our promotion for the album last fall and then I found out Holy crap, guys, we were on the <laughs> college radio charts back in the spring, and I didn't even know, because I didn't even know to look. <laughs> and to have that happen for uh, three guys from central Pennsylvania doing original instrumental music is absolutely unimaginable. I am absolutely blown away, and I'm very grateful to be doing this. Especially. So, uh... I know you, you talked about how you guys all got together and how long mm -hmm. you've been together. How did you each individually get into music, like, in the, in the very beginning, mm -hmm. personally? Like, when did you start playing music? Uh, when I started playing music uh, when I was in junior high school. I was probably the only guy in central Pennsylvania who wouldn't become the next John Coltrane, because I was into jazz early on. That's interesting. Miles Davis, John Coltrane. Disney, my very first concert I ever saw was Dizzy Gillespie at Juniata College. That was that blew my mind. And then when I was in the eleventh grade, my brother took me to see Bruce Springsteen at the Spectrum, and that was my first time at a big rock concert. And I was just like, "This is awesome! I want to do this more and more." Um, started playing bands in college. After I got out of uh, college, I ended up working full time at a recording studio down in Philadelphia called Music Factory Studios. Did you go to college for music? Did you major? Yes, I, uh, I actually majored in psychology uh, with a bit of business emphasis, but then I went off to recording school because I knew I was going to be working in technology. Started working at a studio full-time down in Philadelphia, and that led to me eventually hooking up with Greg Naylor and working with him for years and years. We played New York Fairgrounds multiple times. And then I always had worked with Paul Cruz in Middletown with my band Sparkomatic, where it was more of a jam band sort of situation. And that was where Jamie first came along because he came over occasionally to jam with us. So Jamie, uh, how did you get into music? Um, well, I started out playing trumpet 
start like third grade pretty much and uh, stayed that way through high school but I picked up bass just for fun and amusement on the side and I ended up getting more gigs that way so <laughs> it worked out well and uh, I just progressed from there pretty much. Yeah, like, yeah it was, it's worked out. Well done. Yeah. And what about you there, Stu? Um, I've always wanted Double to play the drums Stu. since when I was a kid. I would always be tapping on things, and I, I, I asked my parents for a drum kit, and they said I wasn't allowed to play anything that they couldn't turn down. So um, mm -hmm. uh, I eventually uh, bought a, an old practice kit and kept it at a friend's garage and practiced there. <laughs> eventually, I had to bring it home, and, and they've not been able to stop me from playing drums ever since. Mm -hmm. I think telling me that I, 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 I couldn't play drums just made me that much more. Uh, passionate about doing it, but uh, uh, a challenge. Yeah, and of course. Uh, you know, I was an angry kid, so immediately got went into punk rock and, and industrial music, and uh, uh, eventually chilled out a little bit, and now uh, try to play as many different styles as I, I could find. Every time I find a new style, I have to learn how to do that. But uh, yeah, very versatile drummer. Yeah. So, uh, so you have originals that you play, uh, as well as some covers. But the covers aren't really covery. I mean, I feel like That's true. you start to play a song and I kind of recognize it, but it doesn't stay that song that I recognize very long. Well. Yes, it gets I that. Definitely jump away from that. That Joe Willick band sort of yeah. takes over and processes and does what Brian Eno used to refer to as treatments, where you would take a song and kind of mangle it a little bit and make it your own. The original music that you do play is. is do you write compositions and do you guys work on those together as a group or? Well, I kind of took the approach of Miles Davis where you invite talented people together and the way we've done the last couple albums has been pretty much I will bring you guys together in the studio, we'll record some stuff as I show it to them. It's recorded the very first time these guys hear the stuff because I feel it gives it a certain edge that it wouldn't have otherwise. Then I'll take those basic elements and rhythms and themes back to my home studio where I'll start chopping things up, looping them, overdubbing on top of them, and then editing it into a composition. So is that, would you say that's your goal as a band to do something different every album? Pretty much, would we you? have, yeah. I mean, the last album had a very urban sort of feel to it. Um, the album before that was really a more defined grooves, uh, was the one that WXPN and some other stations really gravitated to because it had this polyrhythmic uh, thing going, a lot of uh, melodies, very structured. And then of course the albums before that were mostly fairly ambient albums. Um, and then there was Up All Night, which was probably more of a jam band sort of album originally. But with this come upcoming album, we're going to take a left turn like no other band <laughs> and have fun doing it. That's good. Yeah. I'm excited to uh, hear some of that. We're looking forward to um, doing it. You guys are coming to play at Recreate here. Uh, yes. Soon. October 5th, we'll October. be back here Saturday night. <laughs> you can remember yep. which one. Oh yeah. So hopefully we'll have this out and uh, so everybody can come and check you out on October 5th. Excellent. Yes. Again. And so, all right, well what do you say we hear some more cheese? Absolutely. Nice. Excellent. Okay. All right, thanks. More Joel? Please welcome, once again, the Joe Olnick Band. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you.
My name is Joel Olnick. Thank you so much. And thanks to Jandy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all.